Here it's hot. Fire on a boat. This is the story of my heroic sons and how proud I am of them. Fire on a boat. It's by far one of the scariest things that can happen. I, uh, we've lived in Georgia for a lot of years and we have a good sized lake, Lake Lanier. Um, I've had a chance of witnessing fires on and marinas and it's not pretty. It quickly, one boat fire can spread up to a whole dock and burn the whole dock and burn every boat on it because fiberglass is really just long chain um, hydrocarbon molecules that uh, are just primed to burn. So uh, I'm going to interject a little bit of uh, video throughout this, but I want to tell how my boys are heroes. Here's the story of how a boat fire didn't become a marina fire and how my sons are amazing and make me proud. Our family was visiting with another family down the dock and uh, just had a late dinner, seven or eight o'clock. And Camden was the last of my sons to leave the boat to come down to hang out with his brothers, go play on the internet or whatever. And he hadn't been gone very long, just a couple minutes. He comes running up to the boat, knocks on the hall, and yells to the open port hall. A boat's on fire. The boat's on fire. And their boat's kind of down in. We're down in the salon and uh, can't really immediately see out. And our first reaction is, whose boat? What boat? Our boat? Um, I've been just doing some electrical work so it's always running to the back of your mind and I'm kind of crazy so um, sprung up the, the companion way and out in the side and quickly realized it wasn't our boat thank goodness so there's the first thing that Camden did right awesome perfect job and if he had just done that he'd been a hero in my mind didn't end there. He observed and he notified. And he didn't lose his cool. So we spring into action, call 911, call the Coast Guard, because Coast Guard base is a mile up the way. <coughs> and as I'm running down the dock, calling 911 and getting transferred, it's a good little run. Um, Riley sprang into action had, had already sprung into action and he is taking our biggest fire extinguisher off our boat and handing it to me on the dock I, I said tossed probably to a couple people maybe on a video earlier but it wasn't tossed it was handing so he was at the side of our boat to meet me to give me our biggest fire extinguisher to enable me to um do the best I could because uh, he knew he knew me and he knew that if there was something going on our problem I would be running towards it not away from it so Riley acted at that moment and if that had been the end of the story I would have been over the world proud and happy if, with him as well it didn't end there nice long sprint around to um it was a 35-foot boat, a sport fisherman. So it had the outriggers, big diesel engine in the back, and a little cabin inside. And um, it was a, it's a pretty big boat. It was pretty well engulfed as we're running. And big plume of smoke, fire, it, it just glowing on the water. And we could hear uh, flare cartridges, pistol cartridges cooking off. And then the bright light, um, they're, they're not going anywhere with any velocity because they're not contained in anything. Um, but that's how hot it was really quickly. And as I'm, uh, I jumped on the kid's scooter to try to get there quicker, um, and it was almost dead. So it was not really making appreciable headway. 
and I heard someone running behind me. And uh, I just looked over my shoulder and yelled, I'm leaving the scooter here. And Camden was at a run making his best way, probably about as fast as I was, uh, or could, and said, I've got another extinguisher for you. Proud moment from that. Again, if that's all he had done, been proud. He noticed, he notified, and then he's following up to come support me because he knows what I'm going to do. Um, we run to the fire, and our biggest extinguisher is a, a, a decent sized one. And we get to the boat, and I, I discharge it in the back cockpit, the open, basically where you would fight the fish in. And um, it put out the flames for then, or that moment, all the way up the back quarter, maybe third of the boat. Camden's running up behind me, and I, he hands me the other extinguisher. And I tell him we need to find water. There's power and water pedestals all down the dock. And um, we go in search of a water hose and the ability to start knocking down this fire. Um, he didn't lose his cool. He's right there behind, right there with me, helping me out. And he's taking the, the direction I give him without questioning and without just doing it. So we get, he, I think he found the first hose as I'm discharging the second one, the second fire extinguisher, and I get on the fire with that hose. Doesn't have a nozzle, so I'm doing it with my thumb. Um, this is when he starts shining, and this is when Riley is in action that I didn't even know about. So Riley, uh, unbeknownst to me, in, in the middle of all this, he handed me that fire extinguisher and he started running. And where did he go? He went to the marina office. It was closed, it was after hours, but there's emergency contact numbers there. And Riley starts calling the emergency contact numbers to notify the dock master and the assistant dock master. Because there's a dock master, in case of emergency, call the dock master. And then if no answer, call this number. Riley's on it. He said he called like 10 times before he got the first one on the phone. That's sticking with it. That's observing. That's seeing what to do and knowing when to do it. Boiling over with pride of both of my boys at this point in the story. Um, as a dad, as a scouter. Awesome. Riley you know, is notifying these guys. So, Camden is staying with me, and we get the first hose on, he finds a second hose, and another adult comes up, um, Alan from a, a boat just up the way, and he gives that hose to Alan, so Alan can start, and, and everybody's hoses only go so far, they only reach, mine, basically I can stand at the back of the boat, and I'm about three or four feet away from the back transom and about 12 to 15 feet away from where the propane locker is bleeding off propane. We beat off, beat back the fire in the very back, working my way forward. I'm standing dead astern. Alan's on the port side at that point, the port back quarter, and he's trying to wet the boat next to him which is a sailboat um, and it's so high at that point the sailboat that's across a six foot gap between boats the sails are starting to melt so he's wetting down the sport fisherman and he's wetting down the boat next to it to keep it to save it we meet a resident from that dock and who wants to come you know, have a conversation with me in the middle of all this? And they actually tried to shake my hand um, while I'm doing all this. And I'm going, I need more water. I need another hose. Oh, I've got a, I've got a hose. It's almost like Dory from uh, Finding Nemo. And Dan, Camden goes off 20 feet down the way and retrieves another hose with a nozzle. And... He starts spraying. He's like, I've got another nozzle here for you, Dad. And he 
comes over, he can barely reach me to hand off a nozzle to me, and I stop my hose long enough to throw it on so I can start battling the fire with a nozzle. So we've got three hoses on this. And we're probably 10 minutes into battling this, the fire boat comes in. And as, well, before the fire boat comes in, we saw the lights from the fire trucks coming up to the marina. And Riley, after he gets off the phone with the assistant dock master, Riley goes to the parking lot to signal the firemen which pier to go down and how to get there most efficiently. Wow. Wow. I, I wasn't even thinking about that. I wasn't at the time. So Riley's my hero from that all by itself. From, from beginning to end, Riley's my hero. So Riley runs off to tell the fireman. And finally, this fireman walks up the dock as the fireboat's coming in. And he said, those hoses aren't helping at all. You can just drop them and leave. <clears throat> fireboat comes screaming in, throwing a huge wake. We didn't stop. We kept wetting down the boats next to it because we weren't there to save the boat that was on fire. We weren't there to save it all. We were there to try to keep it from sinking and dumping the fuel, uh, but we were there to keep it from catching to all the other boats because one boat hits, the next one, the next one, it goes out, then it dam starts damaging the infrastructure of the docks. It catches all the, the floats on fire, the docks sink, the electrical gets ruined, the water gets ruined, and you're talking about a cascading multi, multi-million dollar failure whenever it spreads from one boat to multiple and it just spreads and you could instead of losing one boat in the marina and damaging two you could lose a hundred boats in this marina and cause millions of dollars of damage and, and loss of use of the boats and the marina and the environmental impact <clears throat> so we kept spraying 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 more and more firemen come up and it's 10 minutes after the fire boat gets here that they finally get their pumps going. We're trying to communicate with the firemen to tell them it's diesel. I'm not a first responder. Technically I am because I'm, I'm a good Samaritan on scene. But when the professionals get there, you debrief to them as quickly and succinctly as possible and you step back and get out of the way. Let them do their work if they know what they're doing or if they're willing to listen if they know what they're doing is rude and I'm sorry I'm going to apologize for that but basically the firemen just stood around watching this boat burn and telling us to drop their hoses instead of protecting the adjacent property we stood our ground out of their way and kept spraying and as the pumps coming online 10 minutes into all this <clears throat> I had told the first fireman that was, I guess, the lead there um, about diesel. So we don't have gasoline on board, but there is a propane locker and it's venting off. It's right here. And I'm showing big flat hands when I'm pointing. You're not going to see something like this in the dark and flickering fire or when you're out. Big demonstrative. 12 feet distance. So I'm communicating direction what it is right there and the fifth time um, i told him that he had stepped between me and that propane locker that i would go back to every few seconds to spray and then i'd go spray the boat next to me he stepped in between that and it really kind of bloomed up and, and, and i guess at that point the eight or ten other firemen that were standing around this boat um heard me say something about propane and saw the the blue flames so they got their butts in gear and I saw that they were going to get this, the job done and I dropped the hose and left pumps coming online my job to get out of the way the moral of the story is I have sons that don't panic they don't they're amazing 
I haven't mentioned Nick and Micah. When I got to the boat and got the fire extinguisher, Tracy took my phone and took over the 911 call. Let me get on my task. Because she knew where I was going. She knew what I was going to do. She told Micah to go to the marina into the captain's lounge. It's on an um, air conditioner, air handler, and filtration. So um, he's asthmatic. We don't want him breathing in those fumes. He, uh, he did that. And Nick stayed out of the way as well. Uh, I'm not sure if his exact location as things were going on, but I know that he wasn't in the way. And as everything was died, had died down later, we all got to the dock. We were watching the firemen do their cleanup. And we, we all talked about it. So my boys and my family don't panic. They observe. They listen. They can rely on each other which makes me so proud because I know if something were to happen when we're offshore or we're sailing and we're our closest help that my boys are going to stand up they're going to step in the gap most people aren't going to run towards a fire or a car accident or towards whatever to help someone and my boys are. So they're heroes. They're heroes in my mind. They're heroes in this marina. They're he heroes. Period. End of story. I, I can't ask for a better gift as a parent. And I, I, I'm going to leave it at that. I am... Uh, I'm going to put them both up for recommendations for citations with uh, Boy Scouts of America because they need to be recognized and it's good f for them. And it knows that, uh, and then they know that people pay attention. It'll also mark a time where they can say, Do you remember when we did this? So that's my uh, boat fire, my boys are heroes story. Put your comments below if you like it. Um, I'm sure there will be other fun stories along our journey um, on SV Another Summer. Um, we, call our cell, or we call our group Small World Big Circle because everywhere we go, we're going to make a connection. And uh, this is quite a connection to the local community. Putting out, getting their hoses out. They'll drench that boat with water. Uh, those are his engines to run the run his pumps. See how long that thing's burning, though. Just cool it just a bit and then like we were cooling it. We were cooling the propane.